Hey, good morning. This fascinating story is from Now Archaeology. I'll put the link in the description. First, I'm sorry I haven't made a video lately. I've been awfully, awfully busy with a friend's project. He asked for my help, and I've been giving it to him, giving him all my time. And mass murder extortion threats have been sent into my daughter's school. Now, we don't take the threat very seriously. It seems to be the work of a child. Nevertheless, children can get up to some pretty bad business, and we have to be cautious. So there's been a lot of disruption around here. The extortionist is demanding 300,000 yen, or else he's going to go on his murder spree. Now, to put that in U.S. dollars, he wants $2,300. That's the price of his canceling his murder spree. Now, if this is, in fact, a child... When and if he is caught, I would counsel leniency and mentoring. The lad is very grievously off course, of course. He might be off kilter, but he's certainly off course. Uh, but he demonstrably has imagination and initiative and organizational skills that could and should, if possible, be steered into better pursuits. And so, as long as he destroys no life, I don't think his own life should be destroyed in punishment for this utterly stupid stupidity. Now, before the article, an introductory remark from me, my opinion. Japanese archaeology, I think, is heavily invested in the underestimating of antiquities. In fact, it seems to me that this is their primary job. This is their this is their primary task. Things that everywhere else, literally everywhere else in the world, are dated as being several thousand years old. Five, six, seven thousand years B.C. Structures of the very same design are here said to be from the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th centuries A.D. Quite the discrepancy. Now, why are Japanese archaeologists isolated, uninformed idiots? No. No, no, no. But, well... I think they are owned. I think they're bought and paid for. And it's not only me. Allow, uh, allow me to quote Professor Basil Hall Chamberlain in The Invention of a New Religion, 1890. The new religion being emperor worship, the cult of the emperor. Quote, While granting a dispensation regarding the national mythology, properly so called, it exacts belief in every iota of the national historic legends. Woe to the native professor who strays from the path of orthodoxy. His wife and children will starve. 
end quote. And true then, true now, I think. The emperor has a family history and family mythology and family theology with fixed dates that cannot be changed, cannot be altered. There's no wiggle room. These dates are immovable, and therefore everything else has to move around them. It's a question of imperial pride, imperial legitimacy, imperial imperium. Well, you can just imagine. Imagine if your family tree were carefully inspected and found to be wrong. If your family tree were found to be, can I say, rotten, rotten to the core, rotten to the taproot, Um, something like that happened in my very own family when someone was coming to the end of someone's life and from the deathbed revealed details that were, were had been hidden from everybody and were very surprising to everybody. These things can happen, but uh, to some families, that would be unacceptable and impermissible. And this is just my amateur outsider's opinion, uh, rooted, however, in the Constitution of Japan, especially Articles 19, Freedom of Thought and Conscience, 20, Freedom of Religion, 21, Freedom of Speech, and 23, for what it's worth, Guarantee of Academic Freedom. And now, on to the article. Titled, Mirror and Sword Discovered in a Fourth Century... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mirror and Sword Discovered in a Fourth Century Japanese Tomb by Ahmet Menguch. Meng Menguch on Thursday, January 26, 2023. The discovery of a gigantic iron sword and a shield-shaped bronze mirror by archaeologists in this ancient Kofun burial mound is a first for Japan. For the first publicly revealed, maybe. The largest circular Kofun in Japan Tomio Maruyama, which dates back to the second part of the 4th century, is where the oddly shaped mirror and sword of more than 2 meters were found. The finds were made public on January 25th by the Nara Municipal Buried Cultural Properties Study Center, which conducts Kofun excavations and research and the Nara Prefectural Archaeological Institute of Kashihara, which supports the excavation. Seigo Wada, director of the Hyogo Prefectural Museum of Archaeology, said that, quote, I wonder about the status of the person buried with the objects, as the individual was interred with a very unusual sword and mirror. There is high expectation for the study of the contents of the coffin, too. End quote. According to the news of the Asahi Shimbun, in a, in a link, it's a dead link, the story has already been made to disappear. In the current year, specialists discovered a burial facility containing a five-meter-long wooden coffin. Five meter long wooden coffin in the Tsukuridashi section of the Kofun, 
which is a projected component in the middle of the burial mound. In the clay that covered the coffin, the specialists found a bronze mirror and an iron sword. This was the first time a bronze mirror in the form of a shield had been found in Japan. Experts hail the mirror... <laughs> I'm sorry. Experts hail the mirror as a masterpiece of bronze item from the Kofun period, which spanned from the 3rd to the 7th century, and note that it is etched with intricate designs on the back. The mirror is around 31 centimeters in width and 64 centimeters in length. Unlike other bronze mirrors discovered at archaeological sites, this one is formed like a shield. The rear of the mirror's central section is elevated so that it may be picked up. The elevated area on the back of the mirror is surrounded by two spherical designs. The designs are the exact same ones that are etched on Daryukyo, a sort of old mirror. A specific kind of mirror known as Daryukyo was created during the Kofun period in the Japanese archipelago. The shield-shaped mirror was given the moniker Daryumon, shield-shaped bronze mirror, by specialists as a result. The bronze mirror has the biggest surface area of any bronze mirror discovered at a Japanese archaeological site. The bronze mirror found in the Hirabaru ruins in Fukuoka prefecture had the biggest mirror surface prior to this discovery, measuring 46.5 centimeters in diameter. The sword is a style known as Dakoken, with a blade that is slightly twisted, resembling a snake. It is approximately 2.37 meters long and six centimeters broad. The biggest sword to have been found intact at a Japanese archaeological site is this one. Due to its size, experts think that the sword was a ceremonial object used to ward off evil rather than a weapon. In 2023 or later, <laughs> or later, the Nara City Board of Education intends to examine the coffin's contents. On January 28th and 29th, it will provide the public access to the excavation site where the sword and mirror were discovered. The sword and mirror won't be displayed right now since they are being restored. And that's the end of the article. Several questions are studiously avoided. Are there human remains in the coffin? Sounds like there ought to be. You'd think someone would have peeked. Um, how big are those human remains? Who would have, who, who would need a coffin 16 and a half feet long? I'm not even dead yet, but I can tell you with a high degree of accuracy about how big my coffin will be. And it's not going to be anywhere near... 16 and a half feet long. It's going to be just a little bit longer than me. Because I need a little bit of uh, room for my pillow at the head and a little foot room. But maybe, maybe six inches longer than me laid out. Take a 16 foot man with a almost eight foot sword. Scale it down, make the man six feet. Now he has a just under three foot long sword and 
a six and a half foot long coffin, and that all makes sense. If there are no human remains in the coffin, why not? You would have to wonder who would take the bones and leave the treasures. Leave the treasures still buried in the clay on top of the coffin. What kind of what what kind what kind of grave robber would do that what kind of grave robber would have the means motive and opportunity well i'm afraid we're not going to get any answers very soon except those which we might infer or deduce for ourselves and i i don't want to be pessimistic but that Asahi Shimbun article has already disappeared within, it seems, 24 hours. But thank you, Mr. Menguch, Menguch, for reporting on this story and letting out the very few details that have already been made to vanish in the Japanese press. And you... Team Hibigon, where you are, have a good week. And Dishun, our ancient new year, is just around the corner. It's next week. And I have plans I want to tell you about. So I'll be back real soon. Thank you. Please think about that 16 and a half foot long coffin and what it, what, what it could mean. And uh, I love you.